I just purchased a real human skeleton today for the showroom, so let's talk about it. John's Bones. Hi everyone, my name is John John and I work with Real Human Bones. And today I wanted to let you in a little bit about my experience and what I do with the bones and how I go about acquiring them. So in this video today, we actually just purchased a real human skeleton. We're gonna take you through that entire process from start to finish. So for context, John's Bones is an osteological supply company centered around preserving pieces of medical history and raising more awareness about the medical bone trade. Behind me, we actually have a wall of real human skeletons that show the process of skeletal progression all the way from 1850 to 1984. So up to this point, there's nothing being documented about medical history relating to the medical bone trade. So we're really making it our goal to actually write things down, document it, and preserve it so future generations can learn more about osteological education. So behind me is one of the earliest models we've seen of skeletal development, and this one dates back to 1850. After that, this skeleton dates back to 1890. Then we have 1920 from the company Adam Woolley, 1970 also from the company Adam Woolley, and 1984 from the company Carolina Biological Supply. So we know this by studying how the skeleton was articulated, if it's using brass, metal, stainless steel, as well as the preparation methods and patina of the skeleton. So from cross-identifying known and unknown collections, as well as doing source interviews, research with anthropologists, we've been able to narrow down this history. So this leads me to actually buying this human skeleton today. On our website on johnsbones.com, we actually have a sell to us page. This allows members of the general public to reach out to us in case they ever inherit a skeleton and just don't know what to do with it. So three weeks ago, a client actually reached out saying that he has a skeleton and we were interested in purchasing it for the showroom. Here at the showroom, we believe in preserving all pieces of medical history regardless of the condition. This one seemed to have a little bit of damage in it when I looked at the photos, but we are still welcoming it here at the John Bones Collection with open arms. The client should be here around 20 minutes to drop off the skeleton. We're super excited for this and I hope I don't get murdered. Oh yes. So I'm super excited about this just because working with clients, hearing their stories, hearing how they got the skeletons is honestly the most enjoyable part of my job. So today is something that I'm really excited about. So with some editing, we will have a skeleton here within the next couple minutes. So let's check it out. All right, everyone, the skeleton has arrived. So let's talk about it. So here we actually have a full human skeleton. And unfortunately enough, when the client actually brought it in, it turned out that the entire skull was shattered and destroyed. And apparently before the person had even acquired it, um, it was destroyed like this. It's such a shame. And I just wanted to raise this up to you guys watching from home. It's our biggest goal to make sure that these pieces are preserved and treated with respect so future generations can learn from it. So seeing the fact that this skeleton had been damaged so badly, it's just such a disservice to this individual who donated their body to science. And I just wanted to bring this up and raise awareness to you guys watching what can happen to skeletons if they're not cared for. Now, I don't think it was this individual's fault because he said it came like this to him when they had acquired it. But this is exactly what happened. And I just wanted to showcase it to you guys. Yeah, so just talking about it, if you look closely, there's actually hot glue all along the cross of this skull and around the skull cap, as well as the temporal lobe here. Um, it appears that after this piece had been damaged, somebody had tried to put it back together and did a really poor job at it at best. Um, but now this is all that's left and I just want to showcase this to you guys. It's not uncommon for us to see homemade glue jobs um, when it comes to skeletons that were damaged and oftentimes a lot of the skulls that come into the collection have some sort of glue remnants left on it. But this is a really bad glue up job and it was the first thing I noticed when it came into the showroom. Now we really wanted this skeleton to fit in our wall of human skeletons and we have a skeleton that's been accurately dated to 1920, and the next one after that is dated to 1970. So we have a big jump there, and we predict that the skeleton is from around the 40s to the 50s, 
so it would fit perfectly right in between the two skeletons, so we really wanted it. So now that I'm looking at this piece, the hook right here or the jewelry that was part of this skeleton, this actually would have been right here on the skull and then it would hook in to actually latch the calvarium cut um, closed. This here appears to be from the company Clay Adams, which was a prominent company, but based on the sternum and how it was prepared, I thought that this company was based out of Chicago. So I actually asked the client where the skeleton was purchased from, and he said it was a medical supply company in Chicago. Ding, ding, ding. Brownie points to me, um, so is something right? So it is assumed that this piece is from the medical supply company Denoyer Geppert. I think I'm pronouncing that right. The way we know this is there's another medical museum and I'm friends with the owner and they had just gotten in the skeleton that was almost identical to this one. Same color, same hardware, same preparation. And it actually has an original label. I'm putting it up on screen right now. That's how we know it because some skeletons don't have any labels and don't have any ways of identifying it and some do. So if we're able to cross reference and match the ones that we know versus the ones that we don't know, we're actually able to figure out the history of these pieces, which I think is incredibly cool. Um, but yeah, I made that assumption and I'm in the process of figuring out if this is an accurate claim or not. So another couple of call outs I wanted to make was it appears that this individual had pretty severe osteoarthritis, which is a condition that can affect the spine. And from the pelvic opening and looking at how the pelvis is structured, this also appears to be a biological female. So these are some of the things we can tell just from looking at the skeleton and what it presents. Also, just to confirm my claims for the known skeleton that we have at the museum, if we look at the inner vertebral discs, which are the ones right here within the spine, the one on the known and identified model is felt and it is a whitish cotton color and this one is too and also that the way that the sternum is articulated is also the exact same on both skeletons so making this conclusion we're able to more definitively say if this was an original piece from chicago or not but from being able to also validate that the client got it from chicago it almost tells me that this is 100 percent from this company and from what i've been able to find this company still exists today so it's so cool to find one of their existing skeletons that they had sold from the medical bone trade so now that the skeleton has come into the showroom we go through the process of restoration. So I have a special glue that we use in order to tack down some of the teeth and make sure that it's firmly secured onto the skull. For instance, here, we had a tooth that fell out because some of these pieces are so old and they weren't properly glued down that teeth fall out all the time. So in attempts for preservation, we wanna make sure that all of these pieces are perfectly tacked and preserved to the best of our ability. So I'm going through that process now. You know, I really talked a lot with my team on this piece specifically and what we wanted to do because I worked really hard to find perfect skeletons to go on display on our wall um, just to show a complete timeline what this was the missing skeleton we needed to make the piece more thorough and the collection more thorough. But with such a damaged skull, I'm not really sure if this piece can be properly displayed, but it would be such a disservice to not put this piece on. And I think it can stand in as a conversation to what happens to skeletons if they're mistreated and if they're not cared for. So what I might do is I might glue it back to the cap and this can actually slide on and still be on the skeleton perfectly here. Let's see if I can make this work. Yeah, if I glue this on like this, I might be able to put it on display and it might still be able to fit in with the other um, pieces. Interestingly enough, the client that purchased this skeleton worked for a medical supply company that purchased out another medical supply company um, almost 20 years ago. And when they did that, this skeleton came. Um, he had held on to it privately for over 20 years. And while I was walking up to the showroom, we talked like, you know, where did you get it from? How'd you come into it? Why do you want to sell it? Why'd you contact us? 
And he actually said that he tried to donate it to a lot of local high schools in the area. But unfortunately, since the skeleton was in poor condition, a lot of the schools didn't want it. Then he tried to donate it to a museum and most museums were unequipped to actually take this piece. So finally, before throwing in the towel, he Googled us and was able to find us online. So we're really glad that we can make this transaction happen. Um, we wanna really give this beast a good home and hopefully find a university that can take it for studying. Uh, but that's a little bit of the background on this skeleton and why the client decided to part ways with it. He felt like he no longer could have it at his place um, and treat it with the respect it needed. And he wanted to find it a new home and was able to find us. So we're so, so happy to have it here with us at the showroom today. It's just, man, the skull, it's just so upsetting to see this. So I really, I gotta figure out a way that I can get this back together and preserve it to the best of my ability. That's a big part of what we do here is preservation, making sure that these pieces um, can survive so future generations can learn from it. But yes, now that we've made the necessary repairs, let's try to get this skeleton up to take a look at it. Um, if there's anyone that specializes in sacral anatomy, let me know what's going on. But this is, I can tell you, is 100% not normal. But yeah, here it is guys. I just wanted to showcase what the skull would look like to the best of my ability um, if the piece was a little bit more intact. So this is where the skull would fit on to the piece. It's kind of hard and I'm trying to hold it in place just because of how bad the damage is. But just for you guys to visualize uh, this individual right here. So I'm getting this skull sent out to get fixed now. Um, I'm really frustrated with this piece. Um, it's such an amazing skeleton and I don't want to give up on it yet. So we're really gonna try to put it up on the wall to show the progression of skeletons in medical history. But yeah, this one is really rough. And guys, take care of your skeletons. Um, people always talk about respect and making sure these pieces are treated with dignity and cared for. And sometimes once they fall out of circulation, that doesn't always happen. Here at John's Bones, it's our top priority to preserve these pieces to the best of our ability. And we really wanna take care of them and honestly not give up on them. So I was really torn about this skeleton because actually we've had four Carolina Biological Supply skeletons from 1984. One was missing a finger, one was had a crushed torso, and I've periodically upgraded it so we have the most complete version of each skeleton on the continuum, but this skeleton's just incomplete, so I didn't want to put it up there, but it's just so amazing and we don't have one to fill it yet, so I think I'm gonna put it up. If you guys wanna see it in future videos, what it looks like on the wall, I'll be sure to show you, but we're not giving up on the skeleton yet. And there you have it, guys. The client was amazing. I'm so happy they were able to actually bring it down and drop it off at the showroom. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the process of getting a skeleton, how I identify it, what are some of the key characteristics that I'm looking at when identifying it, and what we plan to do with the skeleton going forward. It's really important for us to document it and preserve these pieces. That's why we're doing this video today, so you guys can learn more about the process and the, what can happen to a skeleton if it's not cared for. If you guys wanna help preserve these pieces and help the channel, if you guys could like and subscribe, that would be super helpful for us. We really wanna show you guys more content and raise more awareness about the medical bone trade and doing it one day at a time, talking about it one piece at a time is super important. So make sure to follow for more. Ciao everyone.